Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is the day where we are starting the process of finally building the greenhouse. It is happening, I'm so excited. It's currently Monday and this weekend I have some family coming in to help build the greenhouse. So I have five days to get all of the materials together. I have lots of wood to buy. I have lots of screws and brackets and twin wall polycarbonate to, bu to buy. So it's going to be a full week of shopping for supplies. One of my patrons, Yami, her husband, Eddie, is a architect. He offered to make me some greenhouse plans and that has made me feel so much better about this process because I felt for a long time that obviously I've never built a structure before and there's a lot that goes into building structures and I just didn't want to do it incorrectly. And it's not like this is like a small four by four shed. It's a 12 by 16 greenhouse. So it is a little bit bigger. From my research, hobby greenhouses are usually around 10 by 12 ish. So mine's a little bit bigger. Um, and not to say that that really means much aside from the fact that I felt a little bit more pressure for it to be done absolutely correctly because it is a, a little bit bigger. I don't know. I'm going to show you the plans that Eddie made for us. Okay. So this is basically what it looks like. We have a lean to slash gable style roof style going on here. And basically this is so that the pitch on the roof could be a four and 12 pitch because just with our snowfall, I wanted to make sure that the roof pitch would be a good height to prevent snow from making the roof cave in or something like that. So the snow should melt off pretty quickly off of this. But anyway, that's what it looks like. That's what the design will be. We're going to have a door at the west entrance here. And then on the inside, I'm going to have benches going just like all the way around here. So that's basically the plan. Um, you can see a little bit more here and so these plans pretty much have all of the building materials i'm going to need so i'm going to go off of this have a supply list and then i'm going to call a few different places to see if i can get i mean i am going to be buying a lot of wood so daniel suggested that i call like a sawmill and maybe some other like I don't know, lumber companies around and see number one, if they'll deliver and number two, obviously if they have the materials that I need. And as far as the wood that I'm using, it would be the best to use cedar wood because cedar will last the longest. It's super rot resistant, but that would be extremely expensive. And so I know somebody else who made a greenhouse, a wood greenhouse structure made out of Douglas fir. And in my research, the next best wood would probably be something like a redwood. Um, so I'm either looking for cedar, if I can find it and afford it, redwood or Douglas fir. And I can't use treated wood because treated wood will like leach and um, not, not, I don't know if it's leach if it's in the air, but treated wood will like put off toxins in the air. So it's just generally not a good thing to use for greenhouses. However, the bottom foundation is going to be treated lumber because it will be ground contact. I did have a foundation made, a rock foundation. So it's not gonna be like soggy wet ground contact, but it still will be ground contact. And since it's on the very bottom and will probably be covered in rocks, I'm not too worried about it, especially because it's just a few pieces at the bottom. I think you're all up to date. Now I'm going to go through and figure out exactly how much of everything I need and then get back to you when I'm making those calls. I have my full wood list. I'm hoping that I did this all right, but I have all of the walls, the roof, the floor. Oh, I need to write down the, well, I guess it's just that. Anyway, I have the siding and yeah. So here's my totals. I'm going to need uh, nine two by four by tens, 35 two by four by eights, and yeah. Hey there, I'm calling to see if I can get um, an estimate on some wood. I'm needing to buy quite a bit. Okay. So with this specific place, they didn't have very much Douglas fir in stock. Like all they had was two by eights, which I would have to like cut down with a table saw, which is fine because Daniel's grandpa is coming and he has a table saw. So we definitely could do that. It is a lot cheaper. 
Hey there, I am calling to see if I can get some prices and estimates. Yeah, their prices are basically the same. That doesn't help me narrow anything down. But this place that I just called does have two by four by tens. So I would be saving more money because I'm not having to buy two by four by twelves and cut them down. So they have the right sizes for the fur as well. And with the fur, it is a lot cheaper. So for example, two by four by 10 cedar, $33, two by four by 10, Fur, Douglas fur, $13. Pretty significant price difference in that. So if I was to go the fur route, well, honestly, I like this one more because I don't have to, I, I can buy the exact sizes that I need. So this one is sort of sticking out to me as a front runner. And then I'm also going to check on like Home Depot to see what their prices are in Menards. Hello, I'm back for another day of planning the greenhouse. So I have decided to go with the Douglas fur. It is significantly more affordable. I mean, it's a thousand dollars cheaper and I can very easily seal it up and I feel pretty confident about that. So with all of that being said, I need to place the order for the wood and um, just the thought of spending $400 and not $1,500 makes me so happy for this project um, already because there's a lot of things about this project that I wasn't expecting, like cost-wise. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you because there's a lot of factors to consider when building a greenhouse. So first of all, you have the foundation, which I already did and that cost around $1,500. I think it might've been, yeah, it was $1,500. And I just did a rock foundation. So I had somebody clear the area, make it level, and then add on a rock foundation. The next thing is obviously the structure being built. So the wood, so for me, that's $488 right now. And then you have the polycarbonate sheeting, which is the actual walls of the greenhouse. And you can do like the wavy polycarbonate or you can do the twin wall polycarbonate. And I'm going to be doing the twin wall polycarbonate because a trusted friend told me that that is a better option. So that's what I'm going with. And then, you know, later down the line, I'm going to need shade cloth and later down the line, meaning like in a month when I actually am able to use the greenhouse because I'm expecting to build it and then spend like probably a couple of weeks getting it to the point where I can actually use it. Like I'm expecting to be using it like mid-May, maybe late May. Then I have the cost of heating it and cooling it. So the fans, number one, I got a bid for how much it would cost to get electricity added into the greenhouse. And we saw that in a video in the past. And I have to say, I was absolutely shocked by how much it was going to cost. They quoted me $4,200 or $4,300, which is insane. I did some pre-research to see what the cost might be. And all of that said one to $2,000, which was a pill that I didn't want to swallow, but I was willing to do it. But hearing $4,200, absolutely not. And it could be because of materials right now, or I could be getting screwed because I'm a woman. I have no idea. I, either way, I'm not doing that. So I, for this first season, I'm going to see if I can get away with doing a solar powered fan. And I have found a bunch of different options for people that use like you know, a shed or something like that. They use the fan for their shed and they had really awesome reviews. And so even getting a fan that is quite a bit more expensive, like the top of the line solar fan is still like a fraction of the cost of $4,200. Like, I don't think that I'll have to spend more than $300 on a really good solar fan. So with that being said, airflow is one of the most important parts of a greenhouse. There's gonna be a few different components to help with the airflow. So number one would be the solar fans. And number two, I'm going to have automatic vents that will open up with a sensor. So if the, if the room gets to a certain temperature, they'll automatically open up. And that's my plan as of right now. And the building is going to be quite small. I mean, it is 12 by 16, as I said, and that's about 190 square feet. But I found a bunch of fans, solar fans, that can cool down spaces up to a thousand square feet. So I'm gonna go with that and see what happens in the first couple of months. I mean, the summer will really be the true test. And if it doesn't work, I don't really know what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna pay $4,000 to get electricity added, but I have a feeling that it's gonna be okay. And if it's not, we'll figure it out at that time. As far as heating it goes, I'm not going to be installing any heating elements right away because I just wanna get it built first. But my plan is to heat it with propane or gas because electric heating is very expensive. And also, as I said, 
I am not going to be able to add electricity out there. And so I'm thinking right now I'm going to try to do some sort of gas heater. And I do have a friend online who built a greenhouse and is heating it with gas. And they have a gas line at their house and my house does not have a gas line. So, you know, we might want to add a gas line to our house eventually just because we would prefer to have gas like for our stove and stuff like that, uh, possibly for our heating. But I don't know, that's a big undertaking for your home. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking for the heating element is getting like a large propane tank and heating it that way and seeing what the cost looks like because this is going to be an ongoing cost throughout the winter time. And I imagine that I'll have to start heating it around October and I'll be able to stop heating it probably in May. So that's a long time to be heating a greenhouse. I'll definitely be transparent about sharing what the cost will be in all of that and if I can't afford to keep it like at at least 60 degrees then I don't really know what I'm gonna do in that element either because then the greenhouse would only be basically a cold frame slash you know summer greenhouse I would prefer to not do that because I don't know where I'm gonna put everything if I can't use it in the winter time so we're gonna troubleshoot that a little bit later as well but for now I just want to get it up and see where we go from there so Anyway, I'm now looking for the polycarbonate sheeting and I'm having to quantify, like I'm having to do a lot of structure math, which is not my strong suit. Like I'm, any math is not my strong suit, let's be honest. So I, I have like the dimensions of all of the walls that are going to need it. And I just need to figure out how much I'm going to need because at Menards, they have six millimeter, four by eight, clear polycarbonate twin wall panels. And they don't have it in stock at my Menards, but it is in stock in the next town over. So I could definitely go there and look at it. Um, but based on the pictures, like somebody used it for a greenhouse. I want everything to be uniform. So hopefully I could buy all of the pieces that I need from one place in one go so that it's not mismatched. I'm going to do some math and I will get back to you on how much polycarbonate sheeting I'm going to need and how much it's probably going to cost. So I redid all of the numbers of how much of everything I'm going to need and I actually just used my iPad to like write on the document to, I don't think you can see that. I'll put it on the screen so that you can watch the little video. But anyway, um, I wrote out everything on the document and I think that I have a better idea of what I need. After looking at the plans more, I realized that I was missing like two by sixes, the roofing pieces, some of them are two by sixes. Anyway, I decided that I'm just gonna go into the store and talk with them and order the wood because doing it over the phone is just, I, I need to like talk to someone and like look at my paper and you know, doing it in person is so much easier. So anyway, I'm gonna go do that. I placed the order from Menards for a bunch of stuff and that's in the next town over. So I need to go pick that up. I'll probably do that tomorrow with the truck. <laughs> All right, friends. It has been quite the morning getting out the door, but I am here and I'm ready to go. It is raining today, which I expected. And the last two days were sunny and kind of cold, so I didn't really do much outside of the house. But I've really got to get in gear because it is Wednesday and we're building on Saturday. So, all that being said, I... <laughs> I need a car tripod. Anyway, I am currently driving to Jefferson City, which is about 45 minutes away, to Menards to pick up the polycarbonate sheeting and the other accessories that I thought I would need. Made it to Menards, and they're going to be bringing out my order. My camera's also about to die, so hopefully <laughs> it stays with us. But yeah, we're just loading up and then we'll be on the way back home. I also have the wood being delivered today. Okay, <laughs> everything is back there now. And hopefully, hopefully nothing flies out. <laughs> I feel like every time I have something in the back of my truck, it's a game of, is it gonna fly out? <laughs> It's not, we're fine. I, I secure my loads, but I'm just always nervous. Here 
it is. Got all my two by fours, two by sixes, and four by fours over there, like the treated pieces for the base. And we're looking good. And then here I have the polycarbonate. So we're looking good. Good morning. We are on day, I guess, four of planning for the greenhouse. And today is such a beautiful sunny day. I'm so excited. Oh, the sun is finally out. And I think that the forecast has cleared up. So earlier this week, it said, the forecast said that it was going to be raining literally every day this week, including the weekend. And I was really nervous, but I knew, like, I know how the weather works here. It's literally always changing. So I, you can never trust it. <laughs> so now it just says it's going to be windy tomorrow and the next day and then raining on Sunday. And the rain on Sunday has been pretty consistent. So I feel like that is truly gonna happen. But hopefully it's not like mega windy because now that I'm thinking about it, building a structure in wind is probably not very easy or smart. So <laughs> rain or shine or wind, this greenhouse is going up. So today I am just popping out to Menards because I just need to go to a place and look at siding options because that's really the part of this project that I'm the most confused about. So the siding of the project is going to be the bottom half of the greenhouse. So you don't need to have polycarbonate sheeting going all the way to the ground because you know no light is going to be coming in from the ground. So most people cover up the bottom half of their greenhouse with siding or like wood or something like that. So that is what I'm going to do. Menards has like a building counter. So I'm gonna go and talk to them at that counter and see you know what they have how much everything costs, and what would last the longest. I personally really like the idea of having wood at the bottom. Also, I'm aware of like additional cost and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna go out and see what my options are. I'm home, I have changed, and I have the siding. So I decided to go with the 5 8 and 4 by 8 plywood siding pieces. Um, yeah, I don't feel 100% confident about that, but there was basically nothing in stock. Like, when I went, I thought that I'd have all the options that I showed you in the video. And there was a lot that I really liked. And then I actually went up to the counter to order or at least like chat about what I was thinking. He was like, okay, so everything that has this green tag is the only thing we have in stock. <laughs> and it was like the cheapest siding up, like the cheapest siding possible. And honestly, that was the one that I liked the least. It just it seemed, I don't know. It's not that it was cheap, it just didn't, it didn't have any sort of appeal. Like a lot of the siding had like texture on it or something and this one had no texture and it, it only came in certain colors. And I wanted something that would blend with the wood of the greenhouse. So I was thinking that I wanted to do wood siding to begin with, but I wasn't sure how that would go cost wise. But since this is plywood, it was pretty cheap. I mean, it's not cheap. What is not cheap right now? I think it was $41 per sheet and I got eight of them. So that was around $330. But honestly, that doesn't look bad together. I will be treating this siding so that it lasts longer. It's kind of a given, but I forgot to mention it, but the north wall is going to be entirely closed up. So I had to get a lot of this just because of that. Normally it would have cost about half of as much as I paid, but I had to get more because I have to fill up an entire nine by 16 wall of this siding um, because that side doesn't have any windows or anything. So anyway, that was today's adventure and tomorrow's adventure is going to be 
Well, maybe even tonight's adventure is going to be looking for all of the hardware that I'm going to need, like all the brackets and everything like that, because that's the part that I'm a little confused by. I think I'm definitely gonna have Daniel help me with that one because I'm confused. <laughs> I talked to the guy when I was at the wood, like the lumber company, but, and he gave like a little bit of clarity, but I don't know. I just, I still feel lost in how much of everything I need. So we're just gonna sit down with Daniel probably tonight and figure that out. Okay, we are back in this spot. More than half of this video has been filmed in this spot. I'm sorry, guys. Last night, Daniel and I had a little discussion about the brackets that I need to buy. Yesterday, I mentioned that I have only left the brackets to buy. I'm confused again. I thought I knew what I was looking for, but now I'm confused. Let me show you. So these are the RSS brackets and those I think should be pretty easy to find. And then we have this bracket. So this is the roof. So this is the middle piece, like the spine of the greenhouse. And then this is the rafter that goes like this. I guess the trouble is figuring out what the heck this is. I think maybe I could bring a photo in of this and they would know what it is. My friends, it's been a little bit of time and I'm very tired. I'm back from being out and about at the stores and stuff. I realized that I was wearing this shirt yesterday. Don't judge me. <laughs> I had like four outfit changes yesterday. Okay, I can explain. My brain is just not in it right now. My brain is in nine different places. I took so many wrong turns, which made me go to a different store than I was thinking. Anyway, long story short, here is the rafter bracket. And I am so stoked that I actually found this because I thought that this would be the hardest thing to find. But you know what? It turns out that the stud plates, the RSP stud plates are actually the hard thing to find. And I actually can't find them anywhere. I found these, I got 18 of them. They were eight or $9 a piece, which is the expense in all of this that really surprised me the most. Somebody asked me, what expense was I not expecting? This right here. I just spent like $200 on this. I'm so surprised. Anyway, those get attached with these nails. So I got like a big bucket of them. I don't know, one and a half inch nails. So we got that. And then um, this is a chalk line drawer or whatever. Basically, you can mark out your building with this. So it's like a snap line. So you pull this and there's like a chalk ball or something in there and the rope glides along the chalk and when you snap it, the dust of the chalk all goes onto the ground in a line. I don't know why I felt the need to explain that, but that's what this is. And then I got a very large measuring tape. I don't know really why I got this one. I'm thinking like I wanted to make sure that the area was going to be square. So I felt that this would be good, but it's a rectangle and I don't know if rectangles need to be squared off. I don't know. I'm so tired. Yeah, grandparents are gonna be here any minute. Things are moving and tomorrow we're getting started. So I'm actually gonna start a new vlog for that because this vlog is probably 30 minutes or more at this point, hopefully not for your sake. <laughs> but I thought that it would be helpful to show what goes into planning this on the front end because a lot of the videos I've seen, they just show up and they have all the materials already and there's no like video of them going through the process that I've been through. And I know that they did it. It's just, I think it's helpful to see it so that you know more realistically what to expect. And I listened to the Bloom and Grow Radio episode this morning about greenhouses and I highly recommend it. I'll link it down below. She interviewed a person who owns like a greenhouse blog and has built a greenhouse and knows a lot about it, worked in commercial greenhouses. I forgot their name, which is annoying. But anyway, that interview was really helpful because it was definitely very like greenhouse 101, what to think about and all that kind of stuff. And then also she had, I think four of her plant friends on who had four different types of greenhouse setups who just chatted about what to expect and like, you know, their advice and stuff. So anyway, it was really helpful and I felt very validated because everything that he talked about in the beginning of the episode, I had already thought through. Although he did say that using solar energy for a greenhouse is not a good solution, which made me a little bit nervous because that was what I was planning on doing for the ventilation fans. Um, and he said the reason being is you can't put the solar 
panel like on top of the greenhouse it has to go somewhere else so i've got plenty of space to do like a solar farm if i wanted to like just next to the greenhouse so i'm not exactly sure what i'm gonna do in regards to that i'm still not sure but i have time if i want to get electricity in the greenhouse later i guess i could but it's just not something that I want to pay for, you know? So I am going to try and go without it and see how well I can do, but we'll just have to see. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this enjoyable or helpful. And um, if you're building a greenhouse, good luck. <laughs> and I hope that you are excited for next week's video where I show you hopefully the whole process of making the greenhouse. We'll see how quickly we can get it up. All right, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, friends, massive update and huge change to the plans. So we have this set up in the four by or in the 12 by 16 or 16 by 12, whatever. <laughs> and it's only occurring to me now that this is actually very small. We are going to be extending it by eight feet, which shouldn't mess with things too much. We are going to need more materials, of course, 